All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today, let us give some respect to the most respected prophet, proven scientifically, historically, geographically. Any Lee you want, even the Lee from China, he will witness that Muhammad was a prophet. Today I was searching for a topic, what I will go and talk about. You know, and YouTube always helped me. And then I saw two idiots. I guess they are from the UK. And they have a video. The title is, You think Islam is a true religion? Are you stupid? So those are two ex-atheists who became Muslims, white boys. And in their videos, they are telling you how much they feel different now because they are being Muslims. And the other guy, he told us how science agree with the Quran, even though the Islam is not supposed about science. And, you know, I mean, I don't know. I felt I want to cry. And then I left a comment for this potato in the left, the one with the beard. And the coward, he took, he took down my comment. I checked two hours after. All what I said to them, well, as long as Islam is not a stupid, do you dare to take my call? And let us see if Islam is a stupid or not. I will call them. Just give me your Skype. Oh, you call me. The potato, he took down my comment. As the rest of them, they are a bunch of cowards. But I find it very funny that the one in the right, he says that the Quran is the most preserved book. But yet we cannot find one copy. <laughs> this this idiot, the, the bold guy, you know, this guy is, he remind me of this stupid, uh, uh, the rapist from Korea uh, who tried to rape a Muslim woman. What's his name? Kim? Kim. Kim, he want to be a singer. Nobody listened to him. This guy, he want to be a singer. Nobody listened to him. So he decided to convert to Islam. Now when he recited the Quran, still nobody listened to him. Uh, good luck. I'm not going to play any of their videos. You can watch it. I have the link down in the info. But it's the most stupid silly ever. However, I said to myself, if I speak about Islam to be stupid, from my own, well, Muslim will say, well, this is a Christian prince saying that. So I decide to bring Mimi Hijab. Mimi Hijab, oh, no, this is not Mimi Hijab. What the heck is that? Where does this guy come to me from? Okay, hold on, where is Mimi Hijab? Let me search for Mimi Hijab. They are not even close. They are not even from the same country. My geography is messed up like Muhammad geography. All right, so I found a video for Mimi Hijab, and uh, uh, the title of the video, it says, Scientific Errors in Quran Refuted. <laughs> you know, are you kidding me? For sure it's refuted, you know. And then here, I want to say thank you to Mimi Hijab. May Allah bless her. She gave us uh, how to jump from topic to topic, like here. You do not need like you you can search for a certain topic and you can go to uh, any of them i'm not going to skip really but this will be like in this i mean the video is is what uh, is two hours three hours yeah almost three hours so if i want to talk about all of it play it all of it i mean if i play it all of it is just three hours uh, me talking at least will be three hours that will be six hours so i'm not going to do that but i'm going to show you how stupid uh, uh, how the stupid muhammadan they refute the claims. The first claim is Adam I height is 60 cubit. Make sense? How the Muslim they can fix that? Listen carefully and try not to laugh. I choose the first one, you know, and then we will see what we will take next. Today, inshallah, we're going to be dealing with a hadith uh, which references uh, Adam alayhi salam, a prophet of Islam as being 60 cubits tall, which is like 27 meters. And they say this is unbelievable and impossible. But before we get to this hadith, let's talk about the Islamic stance on the theory of evolution. Generally speaking, talking about the theory of evolution, 
Muslims don't have an issue or shouldn't really have an issue with speciation, adaptation or even uh, evolution of animals because we mm -hmm. believe that uh, there's nothing explicit in the Quran one way or the other and I actually done a podcast really? with Abdullah Al-Ajayri, Sheikh Abdullah Al-Ajayri is a prominent figure in Saudi Arabia uh -huh. uh, who researches these matters and well published in, in this field and mm -hmm. uh, in my discussion with him this was his opinion so which is quite frankly like 99.9% .9 if we look at it from a mass perspective yeah you know yeah that's it that, uh, you know, Allah Jairi said, you know, it, uh, we are not against that, but, you know, but he cannot give us a proof from where he got that. I mean, can you, you know, where you, where, uh, where you and Allah Jairi brought us this from, show us in the Quran, where it says that evolution in the Quran is accepted. I want to see that. Go ahead. And, 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 and you know, they know nobody is going to question anyway. I mean, but the second we say, okay, where do you get this from? I mean, shouldn't you give us reference where the Quran and Islam teach evolution? So now the guy who was 60 uh, 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 cubit uh, tall, and now became, we became six foot tall. Huh? Not much different, and yet we cannot find one bone like what they say. I mean, a guy is six cubit tall, sixty cubit tall. This is a this is a guy six floor buildings. Okay, can we find one bone for such a giant man? Okay, so now they they found the solution. This is evolution, but ev but this is not what evolution says. Does it? Really, 99.9% .9 of the theory. The, uh, the issue we have, um, we take issue with, or the point of evolution, the slither of which really diametrically opposes some of the Islamic narratives is uh, human evolution. Now, obviously, we have a narrative. We have a narrative in Islam, which is that the Adam salam, was created directly, or this prophet Adam was created directly by Allah, by God Almighty. And there are many things which differentiate human beings from the rest of the animal kingdom. Morality, the, uh, the ability to question why, you know, um, this uh, many different uh, language, civilization, and so on and so forth. And it couldn't have been the case, we would argue, that we can actually in any way be, uh, be equated uh, to the rest of the animal kingdom. And there's something special about human beings. Like Allah says in the Quran that he has dignified the child. And supposedly he is saying Arabic, by the way, but I'm not going to make fun of it children of Adam. So we, we don't necessarily agree or disagree. We can remain agnostic as to, uh, you know, Darwinian evolution with other animals, but as it relates to uh, the human being. We don't agree or disagree with Darwin. Hmm. Okay. What an opinion, man. We agree about not to agree, but about disagree. So don't we don't agree and we don't disagree. Uh, I hope I made it clear for you, you know. We Muslims, you know, we, we understand you know, we don't disagree with Darwin, but we don't agree with the, the Darwin. And, you know, we agree not with what we agree. But we, we agree and we don't agree. And we don't agree and yet we... What, what, say it again. Civilization and so on and so forth. And it couldn't have been the case, we would argue, that we can actually in any way be, uh, be equated uh, to the rest of the animal kingdom and there's something special about human beings Allah says in the Quran that he has dignified the ch children of Adam so we, we don't necessarily agree or disagree we can remain agnostic as to uh, you know Darwinian evolution with other animals but mm. as it relates to uh, the human being there is something special about the human being uh, so all the animals they change except the human being that's it this is now it's convincing you know <laughs> So when you God Allah, He said He created, a, a, you know, a, 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 a two pairs of cattle, you know, four pairs of cattle, uh, you know, that's it, the, the evolution. The Quran did not mention any cattle as four. The Quran mentioned that animals is either walk in their belly, or with two legs or four legs. This is what the Quran is saying. Oh, we can show reference, but anyway. So here He is trying to explain why Islam is a stupid but anyway you can watch it yourself it's not really important but I want to just show you how they are trying to duct tape and just blah 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 but you know pfft. what is the proof that Adam was 60 cubit long 
if there's any proof the Muslim now if you go and search for Prophet Adam grave you will find the Muslims they have a graveyard for Adam in every every place in the world they have a grave of Adam in Pakistan they have a grave of Adam in Iran they have a grave of Adam in Saudi Arabia they have a grave of Adam in Afghanistan they have a grave of Adam and all of them they are so long look look brother look oh I found one even even Adam and Eve in one grave look this is a different grave this the one in the right is different the one in the other one is different this one is different look at this one this one this is our sister uh, uh, Eve and Adam in the like sister in the uh, in the left and uh, Adam in the right. I looked at how the grave is long, but still it's not six, six cubits. Okay, why we don't open them and see if there is any bones there? They have a grave for Adam everywhere in the world. Look at this one. This is a different one. Look like Adam, he died everywhere. I mean, this guy, I think he was taking an airplane or and the airplane explodes. So his head, this is his arm maybe. One arm went to Pakistan, one arm went to Afghanistan, the other arm went to uh, to the mouth of Mimi Hijab, uh, you name it. So the guy, even even they have his his foot step in Sri Lanka. Yes, brother, because Adam, he uh, landed in Sri Lanka and where he landed in the top of the mount here. And this is his foot step, brother. Mm. And then he went to Jeddah. But true, I mean, it must be true story. Uh, but this is even this is a this is a Buddhist temple. So look like the Muslims, even they are stealing stories from the Buddhist, which is proof that Islam linked to India at the end. Islam is an Indian religion. Because why Muhammad even chose from all the world saying that Adam came from India? You tell me. Right? Uh, I mean, they have, they have, you know, yeah, look. This is Noah. Look, Noah. Look, Noah. Noah looked like a, a falafel sandwich. So this is a prophet Noah. They knew where his grave. Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, brother. Yeah. Okay. Do you have the uh, the grave of his wife too, or only him? I don't, you know. What a lonely guy. What the heck is that? You know, they make those graves just to make money from the, from the naive ones who they are coming, they pray around them, kiss them. You know, the woman she cannot have kids. The sheikh there, he take off her panty and make her have a baby, because the husband is not able to do it. So praise be to Allah. You know, anyway, let us go back to Mimi Hijab and see how he is fixing things around. You know, I mean, okay, forget about Adam now, how tall he is. Prophet of Allah, he knows best. That's it. Prophet of Allah, he said, he is 60 cubit. He is 60 cubit. And remember here, if Mimi Hijab accept this hadith, then he should go by the hadith. Why he don't mention the rest? This is the only problem in Islam? How tall Adam is? Okay. So uh, uh, we will, you know, we will skip this part. And then he says, Richard Darwin's the Quran, the mixing two C's. Okay, let's see this one. This is number two. Today, inshallah, we're going to be discussing a particular verse. And actually, there's more than one of them in the Quran which make these kinds of references. But we'll focus on one because the same thing that can be said of this verse can be said of all of the other ones which have similar phraseologies. And this is a verse in chapter number 55 of the Quran, verses 19 to 21, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Maraj al-Bahraini yaltaqiyan baynahuma barzakhun la yabagiyan. Uh -huh. That he let free this, the two seas of water and he put between them a barrier that you cannot tra transgress between. Now I recently saw, and I saw this before, a long time ago, a video of Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins actually going to a school with some Muslim students, some yeah, young students, and this is a common tactic. You go for the weak ones, the untrained ones, uh, you know. The, the is that what you, why you don't dare to debate me? Is that why you went to an atheist? He is a kid to debate him? Where is this kid? Where is this guy? Where is this guy? This is the debate. This is the guy, Mimi Hijab, he debate him is an atheist. Mimi Hijab, he's upset. You debate kids. Hmm. 
You argue with kids. What about you come to us? We are the specialist. Even this guy, you could not debate him. He is made, you know, he made fun of you literally. Exposed Mimi Hijab dishonesty debate review. You can go watch it. The guy is an atheist. His name is a, a channel Cosmic Skeptic, but he's a kid. But you remember Mimi Hijab don't debate kids, and he don't agree to debate kids. No, only expert. He ran away from debating me. The second I call him, he hang up on me. I call him again, he hang up on me. I call him again, he hang up on me. About logical contradictions, Muhammad Hijab, this is one of the most basic that there is. To say that something is necessarily true is to say that it is true in all conditions, under all... Anyway, you can watch his video for this guy. Let us go back to Mimi. So Mimi is going to get this guy busted. I mean, why, why apostate prophet keep coming in my face? Hold on, let me close this page. He keep coming in my face, man. I have it open from a century. All right. All right. So this guy, he go and he argue with kids in school. The, the students that they they're not theologians, they're not learned. They still actually even haven't finished their GCSEs. And this is the kind of uh, you know engagements that Richard Dawkins and the rest of the New Atheist movement are used to doing with the Muslims. You, you get some weak one, and you try and brainwash them uh, mm -hmm. into your world view. And he was you know talking. Um, to these uh, little girls uh, or these young uh, girls and he was trying to persuade them that really he was uh, that the Quran was wrong he wasn't saying it in any explicit type of way but he was being very pedantic maybe we can get a clip of this video and see what he has to what he's he's doing here we learn about science and the Quran by the end of the day we all came to one conclusion that the Quran is evidence of science so what science has proved to be um, just recently, it's already proved in the Quran 1400 years ago when it was written. Uh, but, but that doesn't include evolution, apparently. No, it doesn't. Um, um, that, so, what does it include? It includes stuff like the shape of the earth, um, about the, um, the mountains, how they secure the earth, and how um, in the, the mountains they secure the earth. You see, you remember, you will see now, Hijab, he skipped that part because this is stupid. According to the Quran, Allah, He placed mountains in the top of the earth. It's not the mountains coming from the bottom of the earth. No, Allah, He placed the mountains in the top of the earth because the earth is a carpet and Allah, He fixed the carpet so the carpet will not fly. <laughs> so those, look at this, look at this woman. Look at, look, at this, look at this chimney. Look at this chimney. Where does the smoke is coming from? Those are living in England. What the English people did to themselves. This is England. So now those girls, they are copy paste what they heard all day long. From who? From the adult. And as you see with them, there is an adult woman. They are not alone. And she's a Muslim. So what happened? See the two waters, they don't mix the salty water and the drinking water. So it's um, pure for us to drink. They don't mix, but they pass through each other. Salty water and fresh water don't mix in the sea. No, it's like, um, the natural barrier. I was shocked they, that RE elbows out science like this. Now, as you saw, this man was badgering the kids. Um, he doesn't want to go to train theologians, Muslim theologians, right, or right. Uh, public figures, or whatever it may be. He's going for the children. And really, he's uh, arguing that this is false in the Quran. If, if the idea is that you have these, uh, the sweet water, the fresh water, and uh, the salty water, that there is a barrier between the, he's, no such barrier exists. He said you can go to the kitchen. Yes, you can put the sweet, uh, you can put the, uh, you know, these two waters together and mix them and disprove the Quran. That's a, you know, this is such a weak and lazy approach. Don't you want to research what this verse is talking about in the first place? In the first place, I like it when you act like in the first place. <laughs> yeah, be careful, you know, once your, your ass will be, uh, will turn loose out of your shoulder. Why you shake like that? I mean, are you serious? <laughs> Do you want to go and read in the first place? So are you saying to me, all those Muslims who made the videos,
claiming that the Quran is speaking about the, 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 the ocean and the sea are mixing, they are not reading like him? Because if you just went to even an English translation uh -huh. of the exegesis of such verse, it's, it's the verse. you don't realize that the prominent or the most popular exegetical opinion on this was that... What is killing me, I want to know how many lies you have in your hair. I mean, you keep scratching your hair every two seconds. For the sake of Allah, just to smash it, kill it. I'm going to focus now in the lies in your head or in the in the idea. Stop doing that. By the way, the Prophet Muhammad was full of lies, in case you do not know. And yet the Muslim, they clean about hygiene in Islam. Go to the topic, man. So what happened now? What is the meaning of this verse? The girls, they said, the water... The salty water and the fresh water don't mix. What the Quran says, give us, give us the answer. The barrier in question were the land masses that were separating seas from rivers. For example, the Arabian Peninsula. For example, other land masses that separate these things. So on the one side of this land mass, you have maybe a sea and the other land, uh, side, you have a river and within the land, you have a river flowing. This is what is being referred to here. Look how stupid you are. But the Quran says they will never touch each other, you donkey. Have you ever heard of a fresh water and salty water never transgress? So now he tried to fix it. Now, and by the way, yes, this is what the Quran is saying. This is what the Quran is saying, I agree. But the Muslims, they lie always about everything. But now because Mimi Hijab, he noticed that this idea is stupid. We go to the kitchen as this atheist, he said to them, we go to the kitchen, we, we grab a cup of water, salty water, and we grab a, a cup of fresh water, put them together and let us see. Very simple and we will find that they are mixed. So now he decided to mix it, in, 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 he decided to fix it. But when he fixed it, he destroyed it too. He made Islam look stupid. But just to show you, uh, I will let him finish his answer. And then you will ask yourself, if this is what is meant, why then the Muslims, they have different opinion? Water, sweet and salty, though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be test passed. There is a bar. Did you hear the word says they meet? Did you hear it? They meet. They meet. But they don't mix. So if the water, this is how this is why we uh, as Arab Christians we laugh at the Quran because we do not need a translator to lie to us and fool us what it says. It says they meet, and then the word barzakh means a piece of land. So how they meet and between them a piece of land? Who is the stupid here? They meet, but there is a piece of land. But look, Zakir Naik, he is not a kid. This guy, he said, uh, this, uh, this atheist, he went to kids, talking to them, and the kids, they gave him wrong answer because they are not the trained one. They are not the, uh, the, the expert one, the educated one. But this is the Quran Yuka himself, peace be upon her, saying, yes, this is what is meant, that water, salty water and fresh water are not mixing. Now, Mimi Hijab, he want to wash his hands from what all Muslims' videos in YouTube says, from all what they claim in the YouTube, suddenly it is not true. This is what the Quran is saying because they notice that this is really stupid. So now he want to wash his hand from it. Listen again to Prophet Zakar Nakura. Bakura, may Allah bless her. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be test passed. There is a barzakh. Barzakh. This is the only the Arabic, Syrians, this is the only the Arabic word you know. understand what did it mean. Today after science have advanced, we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, sweet water flows into the salty water, it loses its constituents uh -huh. and gets homogenized into the water. Uh -huh. This transitional homogenizing area, uh -huh. according to the Quran, is called as the barzakh. Uh -huh. So look, barzakh, according to Mimi Hijab, is a piece of land. Barzakh, according to Zakir Naik, is a transformation between the water. I mean, do you see how, 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 how Islam is flexible? Barzakh is a piece of a dry land, and this is the correct meaning. 
So Mimi Hijab now he noticed that this is this is the stupid thing. People are laughing at us. What do you mean they don't mix? If we keep saying what Dr. Naik saying, people will die laughing at us because what are they mix? And they show you a picture of a of a river going in the ocean or two body of water and they have two different color. That is not because they are not mixing you, idiot. No scientist in the world they will say that two water are not mixing. They mix every second. But because there is a huge body of water coming from different area, they have their own structure, and there is a huge from the other side. That's why we see they are separated, but in reality they are mixing. However, as long as Mimi Hijab he agreed about the answer I used to give always to the Muhammadan, that yes, there is a dry land. But how there is a dry land and they don't, they meet. If we go in the Quran, the yellow page of Muhammad, we will find this. <clears throat> chapter 25, verse number 53. Chapter 55, verse number 19. It says the following. And this is the one Mimi Hijab, peace be upon her, was quoting for us. He says, he has loosed the two seas, they meet. Do you see the word they meet? And there is a barrier between them, they cannot transgress. Translation here is very funny. Let us change who is the translator here. Bikta. Let us see Hilali Muhammad Khan. Hmm. But all of us we knew this is absolutely false. All the huge rivers in the world, if all the rivers, maybe, maybe some of them they are so small, small they don't end in the ocean, but all big rivers in the world, they end in the ocean. So how they never met? How they never transgress? So the stupid Muhammad, he came to it came to his mind that okay, you know what, this God. He put, he created the fresh water alone and salty water alone so we can drink and he will never allow them to mix. Look, I go right now in my well and I get fresh water. Ha uh ha. -huh. How come I don't get salty water? Uh, because they are unable to transgress. And as you see here, they never, they never, never transgress. And Mimi Hijab, he agreed. So this one is very funny. Let us go to the second one. Mimi Hijab. <laughs> what? <a> <laughs> All right. Does the Quran mention sperm and not egg? Oh, that's a nice one. <clears throat> Today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about a contention which is really a feeble and weak intention. I have a request, those who want to download the video later, cut every topic by itself and make it a video by itself. Don't post the whole thing. That will give you more of you, easy to share and easier for you. All right. And get more videos on your channel. And then when you get enough uh, uh, people subscribing, you can monetize it and make good money from the beard and the lies of Allah and his prophet. So now let us see, does the Quran mention sperm and not eggs? Hmm. Let us see what the Quran mentioned. Uh, contention, sorry, which, <coughs> like many of those, is really lazy academics at its best. It's the contention that says that the Quran mentions sperm, but it does not mention ovum, and therefore the author authorship of the Quran was unaware that such an ovum existed in the first place. Well, actually, the Quran doesn't mention spermatozoa. The word nutfa which is sometimes translated as sperm drop. If you look at any of the ancient kind of linguistic um, dictionaries, uh -huh. it simply means قِلَّةٌ مِنْ مَا <laughs> or a minute quantity of liquid or fluid. That's deep. Guys, not far. It's not even a sperm. It's little water. Mimi Hijab, you are a stripper to the bones because we can get you busted from your profit words. 
Let us go to the hadith, and everybody will laugh at you. And not only that, we can go to every single interpretation for the verse, and people will see who is the one is lying. I will type in the search engine only the word notfa, nothing else, nothing more. Notfa, here we go. And now we will find the hadith. And you will notice that every single Islamic translation, they make it translated as semen. This is Sahih Hadith. This is Al-Bukhari. Semen. Hadith number 318. This is Sahih Muslim. Semen. Hadith number 2644. This is Sahih Muslim. A drop of semen. Hadith number 2646. This is Sahih Al-Bukhari. Semen. Hadith number 6595. This is Al-Bukhari. Semen. Hadith number 3333. This is Riyadu Salihin. Semen. You see, I mean, they, he said that it doesn't even mean semen. But look like every single potato Muslim in the world translating it into semen when it is not semen. Hmm? It's not, brother. So why the Muslim translated it this way? That's a good question then. Look like the Muhammadan, they are trying to help us to prove us right against the Muslims. Right? As you see, all of this hadith, is, is not my this is not my website this is not my translation this is not my reference if it is not a sperm then it's not a sperm but we don't find any one of them saying water little water for this is not what it meant this is speaking about the the, the actually even the Quran when the Quran mentioned there's a verse in the Quran mentioned the word water even that one is speaking about sperm even the word water, when you speak about the the creation, you will speak about sperm. Because the Quran divide two creation. There is a creation of Adam. That is uh, Allah, he says, he created Adam from mud, not water. Mud, clean, clean on lazib. When he speak about the semen, either he used the word water directly, or he used the word nutfa, which is more specific about semen. So, he is trying to fix it, but it doesn't work. It is humility. It is duct tape, which he's trying to find out a solution for it. But let us go back. Maybe he have something more to offer beside what he just said. So what, what the Quran is speaking about, the baby, how the baby is created? That's what it means. Uh -huh. Now, some translators have translated this to mean spermatozoa, or, sp or not, not even that, sperm drop, or something like this. But that is us putting our own kind of 21st century glasses on and imposing it on the Quran. The Quran, even now, the Arabs, when they're talking about, when they're writing their kind of scientific textbooks about uh, sperm, they call it al haywan al manawi. Okay, they call it. The only haywan is you, you idiot. He says that the Arab, when they speak about semen, they call it al hayawan al manawi They are trying to translate what is written in the English and Latin books, you donkey. This is why they are using different word. But all of us, we knew that nutfa is the semen, the sperm specifically. Not a single sperm, many. Which is a mistake again, because if you are created from all and millions of semen, that means science is wrong. If you are created from one only, that means the Quran is making more decision about how many. However, either one is wrong because one semen doesn't make a baby or a billion semen doesn't make a baby. The semen duty or the sperm's duty is to fertilize the egg. And the egg is not a semen and the baby is not a semen. It's not, it's not the, 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 the semen start getting bigger and bigger and make a baby, no. This is what your Quran is saying. So he's trying to make it, oh, it's just a little water. What little water? Explain to us what is the little water in the verse. Basically, the animal, which is sperm animal, you know, this is how they would translate it. Stop because touching your nose. Not far, mm. uh, is not specific enough to that very, you know, uh -huh. sperm that we see in, in diagrams. I'm how sure come? you've seen uh, in pictures and so on, in films or whatever it may be. 
so the Quran doesn't mention that, nor does it mention uh, the egg. It doesn't mention the egg and it's because no one would understand this. I mean, think about the Quran is trying to reach out to a 7th century, 8th century, 9th century audience, not just a 21st century audience. Imagine if it's telling the end user here that uh, inside of the sperm that comes out or you emit as a man, uh, there is actually uh, animals in there. Or the, the people would be like, what, what's this talking about? I mean, think about that. The Quran so now he's trying, trying to say to you, at that time the Quran was speaking to stupid people, they would not understand. Okay. So Allah don't want to know, he will speak to us today? Are you saying he used the wrong word? Are you saying the Quran never mentioned how the baby is made? What little water? I will go with him. If the not for me in little water, explain to me how little water became a baby. You just said water. Continue. Quran uses phraseology which is appropriate for all peoples in all times. It uses perfect uh, phraseology which we, as for example, 21st century um, end users of the Quranic uh, discourse can understand, you, you know, with, with, for example, the biological and embryological understanding of today, but also that it couldn't alienate the 7th or 8th century or 9th century or 10th century people mm. up until the age when the microscope was developed. This is uh, foolishness at its core, really, this assumption. So, yes, it doesn't, doesn't mention the sperm in that sense, it doesn't mention the ovum in that sense, but the, the indications, to be quite honest with you, are all there that show that the Authorship of Quran, of the Quran, or the author of the Quran was uh, acutely uh, aware. Like, for example, Nutfatin Amshaj. Inna khalaqna al insana min Nutfatin Amshajin, nebatalihi fajalnahu samian basira, as it says in Surah Al Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2. Mm -hmm. We have created the human being from a mixture. Mixture! Mixture! Mixture. Let us see the mixture from your prophet and get you busted. Here we go. This is your prophet. Explaining what does that mean? Remember, he said it's a mixture. So, what is the mixture which create the baby? It is the orgasm, not anything else not an egg inside the women it is the orgasm of the man and the orgasm of the women when a woman she came to muhammad she had her hand over her vagina and she was pointing there down she said to him prophet yesterday i was having sexual dream intercourse a man he was doing a lot of bang bang to me so i have uh, something here here is here look here you see it's wet so the prophet now he want to give her advice because the prophet this is what he do i mean this is what prophet for women they come to your door asking you about their wet dream what we should do she have orgasm the conversation is so clear and this is sahih al bukhari let us read together Umm Salama said this is the wife of muhammad she said um Salim, this is the, ho the hooker who came to muhammad Oh Allah Messenger, and by the way, this woman later she offered herself to the Prophet to F her. Oh Allah Messenger, Allah does not refrain from saying the truth. Sure, come on. There's no, sh there's, no, that's what the Muslim they say, there's no shame in Islam. Ask any question you want as long as it's about the vagina. But don't question Islam. Ask about the vagina, you're good to go. Is it obligatory for a woman to take a bath after she got natural discharge? Focus with me. Nocturnal, nocturnal, nocturnal. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly. Discharge. He said, yes, yes. If she noticed the water between two brackets, i.e. discharge. Do you see the word water? Okay, do you see the word water? Water. The word here is used is water, not even sperm. Um Salama said, does a woman discharge? The wife of Muhammad, she never had orgasm. This is telling you what kind of penis Muhammad he has. 
his wife, she cannot believe that women, they have this charge ever. And the Muhammadan, they say to you that the Prophet have the power of 40 men. The wife of Muhammad asking, what she said? What? Women, they, Iman, guys, imagine how embarrassing that you are talking, you know, you are a prophet who speak about how powerful you are in bed. And then the wife sitting next to you, and she say, what? This charge? What she is talking about, Muhammad? Oh, honey, don't worry about her. She's said to them, just go to the kitchen, go to the kitchen, okay? Go to the, and now Muhammad now want to explain. So he said to his wife, yeah, yeah. Then why does the child resemble the mother? So Muhammad Hijab is trying to fix it. According to Muhammad, the women and the man, when they have sex, that this charge coming out, not in, that this charge coming out, coming out from the man, coming out from the women, they meet together. And that what make the child resemble the mother if the women have this charge, which is absolutely scientifically, you know, like now, if we look at any of you, I don't know, I don't, know, I don't want to choose any name of yours. Uh, you want to see if you are really who, who in the bed have this charge first, your, your dad or your mom. If you are a male, this is number one, obviously your dad have this charge first. If you are a female, that your mom she have orgasm first. And and if you are a female and you look like your mother, that means for sure one hundred percent she have full discharge. If you are a female and you have you look like you are a female, but you don't look like your mother, but you look like fa your father because perhaps your father and your mother they come in the same time. This is the science of a prophet Muhammad, and Mimi Hijab trying to fix it. According to Muhammad, the water she see, remember, we are talking about a woman, she saw something in her vagina. Not inside. This is, she's alone. She's not with the man. She talking about washing her vagina. Should she wash? Should she wash? As you see, and Muhammad, he claimed that the orgasm of the women is the reason for the baby to resemble his mother. Mimi Hijab is doing his best to fix it, but he make it more worse. But hold on. Mimi Hijab will not stop here until he screw his prophet with a screwdriver. I just notice here actually it says uh, the same topic. If we go down here, it says about uh, uh, the the ribs. You know where the where the semen and the uh, the sperm is coming from. So. Number 24, in the minute 41 uh, and 2 seconds, it says, Does the Quran say sperm come from between the backbone and the ribs? And look, the stupid, he just said it doesn't mean semen, it doesn't mean a sperm, and now he is using the word sperm. People, do you see the stupidity of this monkey? So in the previous, the, the video we are playing right now, he is saying it doesn't say semen. The Quran never mentioned the word semen. <laughs> are you with me? The Quran, he was saying the Quran never said the word semen. He just, because those videos, he made them in part, not in one day. You know, and then they put them together. So the the donkey he forgot what he said that he denied the Quran saying semen, and now he is saying in the in the moment forty one, does the Quran say sperms come from between the backbone and the ribs? So Nutfa was not a semen, never said semen. 
Now, the word, and he said, that means water. Water! But when we go to that chapter here, we will see that it says water. He himself is the one who translated as a sperm. Let us go there and love together. Today, inshallah, we're going to be talking about a verse which is uh, littered all over these kind of anti-Islamic websites. Anti-Islamic is... website, brother. Ah, what I did. Sorry. Assalamu alaikum. Hold on. Today, inshallah, <laughs> we're going to be talking about a verse which is uh, littered all over these kind of anti-Islamic websites. This is in chapter 86, verse number 7, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانِ مِمَّا خُلِقْ خُلِقَ مِمَّا مِن دَافِقْ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ That let human beings see where he has uh, been, uh, from what he has been created. He has been created from a secreted or a gushing fluid that comes from, or that he comes from, and we'll talk about the differences in translation. Now, uh, I, I hope now he will not scratch his head no more, no more lies. Focus with me, people, focus with me. Focus with me, Muslims, and see how this stupid idiot, he just got his prophet busted again. The same Quran, the same story about the creation, just the video before it, in the same video, he denied that the Quran is speaking about semen ever. The Quran just say water, little water. He doesn't say semen. Now he is saying it is semen. Between the backbone and the ribs. And obviously here, Sulbu Taraib is translated in more than one way. And we'll come to this. The contention is that this is actually unscientific because we know that spermiogenesis uh, happens in the testicles and it doesn't happen between the backbones in the ribs, for example. And the assumption obviously is that what is being referred to in the verse when it says Ma in Dafiq is sperm. And therefore, this verse is out of line with observable reality, and it's a proof against Islam. This is the this is the contention. So let's deal with one thing at a time. First and foremost, does the word what does the words sulba and taraib actually mean? Mm -hmm. So there are three opinions which are represented in the classical literature and the dictionaries. Uh -huh. Either we're talking about the backbone and the ribs of the man. Or we're talking about the backbones of the ribs and the uh, backbones of the man and the ribs of the woman. Or we're talking about the backbone and the ribs of the woman. And we're not talking about the secreted uh, liquid or the secreted fluid. But instead we're talking about the insan, the human being himself. Because the verse says, Let the human being see from which or from that which he has been created. He has been created from a gushing or secreted fluid. Which comes from between the backbone and the ribs. Now, could it mean that the human being, let the human being see which, where he is being created from. And taqdeer here is, that the insan was created from secreted fluid secreted that the insan it comes look how they change the meaning the Quran saying that the human being come from between the backbone and the ribs <laughs> this is what the Quran is saying simple the Quran is not saying that there is a sperm coming from the backbone and the ribs no but the verse says, gashing fluid, ma in dafiq. Let us go to the hadith and see what ma in dafiq mean and get Mimi hijab busted again, as usual. Here we go. Ma in dafiq. <clears throat> what may in dafiq mean? We will see in a minute. Let us see. 
uh, where it's mentioned, mention of a man, whenever you know, mission uh, on when a man he kiss his wife, and if a man he kiss his wife, a mission occur that uh, uh, only have sacrifice anymore. So here they are talking about ma in dafiq, but the translation is not shows as it is. But here this is the word ma in dafiq. Ma in dafiq. If a man he come to his wife and there is no emission of or ejaculation that is was ma in dafiq ma in dafiq is ejaculation it's not even about a human being your donkey coming from the the the, the, the women it's about ejaculation it says in the quran in front of you it is a water water gushing forth when a human being he come out he come as water gushing forth or this is the orgasm let us go here and the funny is this guy he is the same one who says in the beginning he says why those people don't go and see what the interpretation go why those people don't go and read any tafsir what they say suddenly he don't want to see tafsir he don't want to show you any tafsir because tafsir will get him busted Chapter 86, verse number 6, it says, is created from water gushing forth. It's not. What is gushing forth? Is the water. Who is the one that's proceeding? The water. Suddenly, Mimi Hijab, he tried to fix it. He make it. Oh, this is about the, the human being, the baby. He is gushing forth. Let us go and see Ibn Kathir, the one, Mimi Hijab himself, he asked me last time I spoke to him, this is the only time, he will not dare to make it happen again. He said, Ibn Kathir says that, Ibn Kathir, let us go and see what Ibn Kathir, he said about that, and now Mimi Hijab, he will wash the face of Ibn Kathir with his ass. Let us see, chapter 86, verse number 6. So suddenly the Muhammadan, they have totally different interpretation for the Quran. All of this is the purpose is to find a way to duct tape the stupid Quran. So let us see what Ibn, uh, what, what Ibn Kathir said. Let the human being see how is it created. This is alerting the, the man weakness of the origin which is, he was created. The intent of it is to guide man to accept the reality. That the hereafter, because whoever is able to be to begin the creation, then he can also repeat the creation. Okay, and then he says, explain the verse. He created the water gushing, he's created from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that comes out bursting forth from both the man and the women. Mimi Hijab, peace upon her made it that the one is gushing forth is the baby the human being come out from between the backbone and the ribs but the quran is saying that the backbone is the backbone of the man and the ribs is the ribs of the women and the water is gushing forth so the quran assume that women have a sperm coming from their ribs and men they have a sperm coming from their backbone and i find it very funny that mimi hijab he agreed that yes you know it cannot be that sperm is coming from the backbone it cannot be that a sperm is coming from the ribs and he is the same person in the same video he mentioned when we mentioned about this guy who the atheist who spoke to the muslims he said why he don't go and open any tafsir if you open any tafsir, he will find the answer. The question now, where Mimi Hijab he get tafsir, his tafsir from? As long as you are asking them to get their tafsir, are you now a mufassir? Are you now a scholar of the scholars? Are you now more educated than Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, Al-Jalalain, etc.? 
Is is Ibn Kathir the one who make tea and coffee for you? Mimi hijab and he, you, you you send him to, to buy you falafel when you are doing your studies? So in order to cover the stupidity, we fabricate something is not there. In the same here, let us see. If there's anything connected, I'm trying to connect all the stories he mentioned about the baby creation. Uh, this is a semen, the sperm coming from between the backbone. And we got him busted already. Uh, uh, okay. Huh. This is again about the baby creation. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play them together so we can laugh. Uh, in, the, in the minute, And uh, two hours and sixteen minutes and fifty-two second. Number nine. Does Quran word the alaqa only mean congealed blood? Let us connect all those together so we can come with the conclusion and the Quran science about how the baby is made. <clears throat> Inshallah, today what we're going to be talking about is something which relates to the subject. I love it that you grow, you know, I mean, you, you, uh, you play the video before it, he have no hair, the video after it, he have long hair, the video before it, he have no hair. I mean, this guy, he have a wig. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so what the subject? Of Quran and embryology. And a particular contention which people have, which is that the Quran allegedly says, according to these detractors, that I've seen their material on anti-Islamic websites, that... The Quran uh, that the human being is made up from a congealed clot of blood and we know from embryological uh, study that that is not the case and they say the word alaqa which is the operative word the important word it doesn't mean to cling or to be attached to something which is what many Muslims of today say which they say is a superimposition of um, modern scientific jargon into the vocabulary of the Quran. So let's deal with these two contentions one by one. The first thing I'm going to be dealing with inshallah is the second thing I've just mentioned, which is the fact that this word alaqa cannot mean uh, something which clings or something which is attached to something else. And that in the vast commentarial tradition and the vast exegetical tradition for 1400 years, this meaning was unknown to medieval scholars and this meaning was not used in this way to indicate attachment or connection. The truth of the matter is that is false. That in fact medieval scholars from the very early days of Islam were mentioning in their treatises, in their dictionaries and in their exegetical and commentarial works that in fact alaqa does mean to be attached to or connected to. So I'll give you one or two examples. Ibn al-Jawzi, he says this, and he was a 6th century scholar. Uh, Al-Asfahani, who... Uh... Let us see first, one by one. Remember, this guy, he went to all the Muslim scholars, and then he said, Ibn al-Jawzi. Ibn al-Jawzi. So, Muhammadan, if I go right now and look at what Ibn al-Jawzi said, we should find that Ibn al-Jawzi did not say ever that it is dead blood. Who is a Muslim would like to call me live on air and read for me what Ibn al-Jawzi said? I'm going to open Ibn al Jawzi. Hmm? This is your Islamic website. And whatever Ibn al Jawzi say, we will say, we will take. Who is a Muhammadan? He wants to get Muhammad hijab busted with no mercy. And tell us what Ibn al Jawzi said. Any Muhammadan? <laughs> you 
You know, I think that Mimi Hijab, when he did make this video, he knew that the Muslims is the one who will watch it. And if there's non Muslims, they don't know even who is this guy, Ibn Jawzi. Where are we going? Where are we, where we, are we going to find him, even where to, to read his book? And if we find it's going to be in Arabic, I would like to call Mimi Hijab if he's there to tell me what Ibn al Jawzi said. Hmm? What if I show you and I show everybody here that Ibn al Jawzi he said that it is a dead blood? And it is a solid blood, not only dead blood. Let me open Ibn al Jawzi. This is Ibn al Jawzi. Oh, 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 oh. Mimi Hijab, he says, as an example, there is uh, scholars who explain this word. It doesn't mean that blood, it doesn't mean blood at all. It means something is hanging. Yes, brother. And he lied and he said they are from the 6th century. Those are people from the 11th century. And you are a fraud. And this is Ibn al -Jawzi. Let us see what he said. <laughs> Actually, Ibn al Jawzi, he got you busted in two things. You said that nutfa does not mean sperm. Ibn al Jawzi, he said, and nutfa fahiya al mani, it is a semen. Wal halaka damun abitun jamid. Al halaka is a dead blood. <laughs> the monkey, he is the one who asked me to open the book of Al Jawzi, Ibn Al Jawzi, not me. I mean, from all the scars, he is sure now. He decided, he, he looked all around where I can find, where I can find. So he looked for someone, nobody can find him. This is the website of Ibn Al Jawzi. All of you open it. Open it in Google browser so you can click at Google Translation. You can switch to Google Translation. After you open the website, I want you to click in the right side of the page. You see the, the page have like a different format. Like there is a there is a window here. Uh, scroll by itself and the Quran at the top is fixed you see so let us see if that will work I don't know if that will work translate to English if not I, I will find the front page here we go we read it from the top <clears throat> is it a blood and it's a solid blood <laughs> remember he is the one who said that it doesn't say anywhere semen so here it says semen here the translation saying lump of his of a blood the arabic says solid solid blood which means dead jamid Jamid. Anyone who speak Arabic, he knew. Jamid. Let me show it to you again. This is the word Jamid. So Mimi Hijab, peace be upon her, she decided to go to a book, and this book is going to explain to us that you know they are lying, those the enemy of Allah. They are saying it is dead blood, it is sort of blood. No, 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 no. 
I will show you someone from the 6th century, a liar. He is from the 11th century. When he said 6th century, is just to deceive you, to make you believe this is from the time of Muhammad, the earliest. Look like this guy was, he made tafsir of the Quran before the Quran. Because in the 6th century, Muhammad don't have a book yet. This is the 6th century of Islam, which means the year 1100 something. However, this idiot, he chose for us a book, agree about two things. He said it doesn't say sperm, and as you see, it says a sperm. He said it doesn't say that, CP. The turn to be, it says that CP. Do you see it, people? Anyone, any Muslim can tell me how stupid this idiot. And this is the guy who did the study to show us how to refute. Same time, as long we prove now from the book of his choice. Rem remember. Can he now say, I don't accept Al-Jawzi? <laughs> Can we make hijab say, Al-Jawzi is a donkey? You are quoting him because you are trying to prove your case by getting a scholar from the 6th century, brother. Can you now deny that you got yourself busted in everything you said? Your lie, you said the Quran never mentioned the word semen. But Ibn al Jawzi, he said semen. Let us go back to the video. So, first one, first reference, he said, we got him busted with it. Did you guys get the reference? People, did you get the link? Did we get the link? There's anyone did not get the link. Don't ask me later for the link. May Allah link you. This is the link again. Save it. And go to Mimi Hijab and show him how stupid you are. Christian Prince got you busted. You thought nobody will go after what you said? Well, we are here to laugh at you at your prophet. So now we prove actually, as long as this is the scholar he approved, we prove Islam to be false because he himself, Mimi Hijab, agreed that this is cannot be true. If this is true, this is a scientific mistake. Let us go back to Mimi Hijab. May Allah bless her. She has given us all the jewels you can imagine. Who can deny the jewels of Mimi Hijab? So it was weird to start from the beginning again. Uh, and, uh, okay, here we go. Inshallah, today what we're going to be talking about is something which relates to the subject of Qur'an and embryology and a particular contention which people have, which is that the Qur'an allegedly says, according to these detractors that I've seen their material on anti-Islamic websites, that the Qur'an, uh, that the human being is made up from a congealed clot of blood and we know from embryological uh, study that that is not the case and they say People be my witness. Did he say that is not the case? And isn't it him who chose Ibn al Jawzi? And isn't it Ibn al Jawzi? He said, Well, this is now what it is. It is dead blood. Before I continue with more reference he will give us, let us go and see the hadith. Look like Mimi Hijab, he knew better than his prophet. When we read the hadith, how Muhammad explained how Allah, he created the baby. What the hadith says. First of all, Muhammad, he claimed that you are collected as semen in your mother belly for 40 nights. Maybe this is the case for me. I don't think this is the case for everybody because I have special skills and look like Allah was taking a lot of time to create me if he is the creator. 
So 40 days inside your mother belly and you are collected as what? As a semen. But this is not what we are talking about. We are talking about the blood. Look what the Muslim translation is saying. Look like the Muslims are the anti-Islam too. He said he saw that the anti-Islamic phobic people saying it's a clot of a blood. Remember, the one who said that is the anti-Islam. But this is the hadith of his prophet, and this is the Muslim website, and this is their translation. It is now a clot of blood. The question here to Mimi Hijab, who her hair is growing, short in hair, short in growing. I don't know, it's a miracle how this happened. Why the Muslims are saying it's a congealed blood if it is not? Can you explain to me? Are they helping us? Are they taking our side? Are they making things up? Is the Muslims Islamophobic too? Maybe the Muslims are anti-Islam. Maybe, you know, the owners of Islamic website, all of them, they are anti-Muhammad. Something fishy, brother, you know? So, not only that, if we go to the, inter the translation, if we go to the translation, we will see the Muslim translated as a congealed blood too. <laughs> Remember, he saw that a translation in the anti-Muslim videos. Absolutely false. This is not what Islam teach, brother. But isn't this your Islamic translation? Let us see who is the one who translate that. Look, this guy is a Christian. His name is Muhammad Hilali and Muhammad Khan. Double Muhammad. Double Muhammad. They translate the Quran. They come with double a clot. So the anti-Islamic brother, they are lying saying it is a piece of thick congelated blood. When nowhere it mentioned that. It's a lie. It's a lie. Sometime I can fly. The Muslims, they think they can fly with their lies. And then the Muslim, they look at the comment underneath and the Muslim says, praise be to Allah, brother, for having you. You refuted them all. You got them busted. Brother, you did the great job, brother. And if you finish them. Did you just say Ibn Jawzi? Here we go. Ibn Jawzi got them busted. Brother, do you have more reference beside Ibn Jawzi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Only I have Ibn Jawzi. You are kidding me? Listen, I will give you more. Hey, the word alaqa which is the operative word, the important <coughs> word, it doesn't mean to cling or to be attached to huh. something, which is what many Muslims of today say, which they say is a superimposition oh. of um, modern scientific jargon into the vocabulary of the Quran. Hmm. So let's deal with these two contentions one by one. The first thing I'm going to be dealing with, inshallah, is the second thing I've just mentioned, which is the fact that this... Word alaqa cannot mean uh, something which clings or something which is attached to something else. And Potato, you are the one who said that the word nutfa is a water. And no, you are your donkey. You are saying, you are trying to convince us, the Quran saying that nutfa, which is water, is a clinking in something? That's what you are trying to say? <laughs> and then he quote for us Ibn Jawzi this is telling us that you never opened the book of Al Jawzi maybe you never have it somebody told you in fact I am 100% sure that you never had the book of Al Jawzi because if you have it you will read it if you read it you will never mention it there is no way a person will mention such a book and he did read it.
stupidity is amazing. Oh boy. Let us see the second reference he have. And that in the vast commentarial tradition and the vast exegetical tradition for 1,400 years, this meaning was unknown to medieval scholars and this meaning was not used in this way to indicate attachment or connection. The truth of the matter is that is false. That, in fact, medieval scholars from the very early days of Islam were mentioning in their treatises, in their dictionaries, and in their exegetical and commentarial works that in fact alaqa does mean to be attached to or connected to. So I'll give you one or two examples. Ibn al-Jawzi, he says this and he was a 6th century scholar. Uh, Al-Asfahani who uh, has a dictionary talking about the mufradat of the Quran or the singular words of the Quran. He also mentions that one of the meanings of the word alaqa is something to be attached to sahibuhu, to its companion. So something to be attached to something else. To you know, the funny is that the word alaqa is called alaqa simply because it is attached. But this is not the question. The word alaqa is a given description for blood and blood only. When you hurt yourself, you have a blood attached to your skin. If you wash it when it's still fresh, you can do that. But the more you give it time, the more this blood will make a, will make a alaqa. And the Quran is saying it clearly that that semen become a alaqa. Not aliq. The semen itself become. It's a transformation. If you remember, we opened the Quran for you. Let us see here. It says, "We made the nutfa into a clot." So what? What become a clot? The nutfa. Mimi Hijab, he says that the nutfa is not semen, it's water. Al Jawzi, the same scholar he mentioned, he said it is a semen. And I wonder why he don't want to quote Al Jawzi for semen too. And that nutfa, which is the semen, but if we take it as Mimi Hijab, he said it's just water, that water become a clot between two bracket, a piece of thick congregated blood. We can change the translator. We are not choosing our, I'm just randomly, let us say Khattab. I'm just using Islamic translation. A clinging, a clinging clot of a blood that developed, developed clot into the lump. And here you ask yourself, why every Islamic translation saying what Mimi Hijab trying to fight? The answer is very simple. Because it's already proven to be false. So how we can accept something false, we have to duct tape. I'm just a switching translation from one to one randomly. I don't know what will come next. Remember, he said nowhere it says semen. But as you see, the Muslim, they keep saying semen. Yusuf Ali. Let us see what Yusuf Ali is saying. We made the sperm into a clot of a congealed blood. But Mimi Hijab, he noticed those things happen only in anti-Islamic websites. So it turned to be that all Muslim scholars are anti-Islamic website. What if I go right now and see what Ibn Kathir is saying or Al-Qurtubi or Al-Jalalain? Are the anti-Islamic website, chapter 23, verse number 14. This is Ibn Kathir. 
and ask yourself if you are a Muhammad and who you want to talk someone in YouTube or the ones they themselves they ask you to open when he, he start his video he is the one who ask you he asked this guy the atheist who met with the kids why you did not open the tafsir huh why you did not open the tafsir why you did that in purpose don't you you don't want to open the tafsir but it turned to be he is the one who don't want to open the tafsir and he started giving us his own tafsir and now if we see what ibn kathir is saying is mimi hijab going to say he is anti-islamic he is islamophobic what he will say let us read what ibn kathir is saying And we made the nutfa, which, which is the water gushing forth, that come out of the line of the man, which is the back bones actually, i.e. the back, and the ribs of the women, i.e. the bones of her chest. <laughs> and then it become a red clot. Ikrama, he said, this is a blood. <laughs> Mimi Hijab is telling you that you have it wrong. You are listening to the anti-Islamic, phobic, demonic, sick people who hate Prophet Muhammad. These be upon him. <laughs> This is Ibn Kathir. <laughs> and we can show you the same from Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tawari, Al-Jalalain. It turned to be that all of them, they are wrong. And now we are in trouble. So we need to find an exit. We need to find an exit. So let us go back to the video of Mimi Hijab. May Allah bless her. Uh, so the comedy will continue. Okay. Give us more reference, please. I'm, I will try not to stop him uh, so we can listen to more. To be connected to it. So this is a specious and uninformed <coughs> claim, quite uh -huh. frankly. I'm quite surprised, I'll be honest, that these individuals who are making these claims didn't do themselves the academic justice. See? They did not do the academic... They did not do the academic justice. They did not do the academic justice. <laughs> Nikathir, Ibn al Jawzi, the one he chose for us, they did not do the academic justice. <laughs> al Qurtubi, Al Jalain, Ibn Hummus, Ibn Falafel, Ibn Mut'a, all of them they did not do the academic justice. The guy who keep sniffing his nose, he is the one who did academic justice. Tell us more. Of looking at these medieval uh, books, or they were foolish enough to, to think that we were not going to do that. Ah. Indeed, these meanings are there, ah. they are codified, they are written, and they exist. Really? Now, the second contention is they say, well, we, okay, let's give it to you. It could mean to be attached to or connected to something, which will go in line with modern embryonic understanding of the embryo being attached to the uterine wall. And obviously, through the umbilical cord and, uh, and others, other things, uh, you know, uh, taking from the nutrients of the host, in this case, the mother. They say, fine, it's, it's in connection with this, but this other uh, thing or meaning is completely unscientific, which is the meaning of uh, a congealed blood, because they say it's not blood at all. Uh, it's not blood. The composition, the chemical composition of the fetus is not a bloody one. It's not one that is composed primarily of blood. And you see, this is where their argument is going to fall flat on its face. Because this, again, is a weakness of the understanding of the Arabic language. And in fact, stop. Open your eyes, clean your ears. Mimi Hijab is going to give us an Arabic lesson. He said to David Wood, I know this is coming. 
You don't speak Arabic. You don't speak Hebrew. Elijah means God is with us. <laughs> fact a weakness of the understanding of the sunnah uh -huh. of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam <laughs> because the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself said yeah he said in the hadith uh -huh. that two things have become allowed for us or two things which uh may it or dead uh, and two things and he referred to the word daman two bloods the word dam in arabic means blood i don't know i think i skipped part of it because he did mention another scholar why I did not hear it? Hold on, hold on. He mentioned another scholar. I don't reference. I, I think I skipped it by mistake. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Sorry, guys, I have to play it again. At this time, I will not skip it so we can. Inshallah, today, what we're going to be talking about is something which relates to the subject of Quran and embryology uh -huh. and a particular contention which people have, which is that. The Quran allegedly says, according to these detractors, that I've seen their material on anti-Islamic websites, that the Quran, uh, that the human being is made up from a congealed clot of blood. And we know from embryological uh, study that that is not the case. And they say the word alaqa, which is the operative word, the important word, it doesn't mean to cling or to be attached to something which is what many Muslims of today say, which they say is a superimposition of um, modern scientific jargon into the vocabulary of the Quran. So let's deal with these two contentions one by one. The first thing I'm going to be dealing with, inshallah, is the second thing I've just mentioned, which is the fact that this word alaqa cannot mean uh, something which clings or something which is attached to something else. And that in the vast commentarial tradition and the vast exegetical tradition for 1,400 years, this meaning was unknown to medieval scholars. And this meaning was not used in this way to indicate attachment or connection. The truth of the matter is that is false. That in fact, medieval scholars from the very early days of Islam were mentioning in their treatises, in their dictionaries, and in their exegetical and commentarial works that in fact alaqa does mean to be attached to or connected to. So I'll give you one or two examples. Ibn al-Jawzi, he says this and he was a 6th century scholar. Uh, Al-Asfahani who uh, has a dictionary. So now we got you. Guys, he said Al Asfahani, he said that too. Aha! Shall we go to Al Asfahani, Amar Rabbi Amar? If we go to Al Asfahani, I mean, the funny is the Muslims are taking the interpretation of the Quran and the meaning of the Arabic word from somebody who is from Iran. He's a Persian. Al Asfahani. <laughs> so, <laughs> Al Asfahani, brother, he said, brother, okay, I will go and see Al Asfahani what he said. Give me a second. What Al Asfahani said? Let us see, I'm going to open the book of Al-Asfahani. Are you sure, Mimi Hijab, that Al-Asfahani said that? What if Al-Asfahani did not say that? And he said the opposite. I mean, how you are going to fix this scandal, potato? This is the book of Al-Asfahani. Mimi Hijab, I just whipped the floor with your face. This is Al Asfahani, Gharib al Quran. And by the way, the page before it, the one I showed you, uh, uh, which one? The one, yeah, uh, the one, uh, it doesn't show page number. It doesn't show page number. Yeah, that website doesn't show page number, but here we see page number. 
This is Al Asfahani, and I'm going to switch uh, to translation Arabic to English. Remember, this coward, he is the one who just mentioned to us two references to prove his point. Those are not my choice. I am not the one who came with it. I am not the one who made it. I am not the one who chosen it. So you have no excuse, Muslims, to say, Mimi Hijab, he chose the wrong one. You make a video, you prepare for it to refute the errors in the Quran. And you mention that you are going to give us two examples of early scholars who they say that this does not, not mean dead blood and solid blood. And guess what? Both of them, they say so. Both of them, they say so. This is Al-Asfahani, value number one. Page number 343. Three, four, three. Let me sing it for you. Al-Asfahani, Value number one, page number three, four, three. And not only that, in one place, no, he repeat that. Al Asfahani, value number one, page number five, seven, nine. Let us use Google translation, peace be upon him. <laughs> it is what the translation is not too much accurate but we will go with it and the leash is solid blood guys does it does it say solid blood does it say solid blood and from it the baby is made do you see it This is one scholar. Now this is the say al uh, uh, sorry Asfahani. Where is the Asfahani? Uh, here we go. This is the Asfahani here. Book name Mufradat fi Gharib al Quran. This is the one he chose. He said he have even a dictionary for the Quran. So now we are in the dictionary which Mimi Hijab he mentioned. Very number one, page number three four three. That leash, which is attached, is a solid blood which is where the baby is made from and he's born from it we will go to the page after just we finish here again Mufradatu Gharib al-Quran the same book for al-Asfahani part number one page number five seven nine al-Alaqa which is the attached the translation is not coming right which is a solid blood which is the baby is born from it And the rest of the scholars, they agree. All the Islamic scholars agree. It's a solid blood, solid blood, solid blood. All those are the, so, the, the solid Muslim scholars. And then this idiot Mimi Hijab, he chose from all of those, someone he thought nobody will find their books. They're, this guy, he have very little tiny small books. He said to himself, it's very hard to find his reference. So how in the world they are going to find the reference for this guy? They will not be able to find it. So let us open the first one and use Google Translation again. <laughs> and we will share the link with you. Uh, The translation is not too much accurate, but what I can do, I mean, this is what we have. However, the important for us, it is a solid blood. That alaqa, which is attached, is a solid blood, and from it, that alaqa, which is the baby is born. All his video here is to prove to us that it doesn't say that CP. 
Is that correct? And he agreed, this is no way the Quran saying that. And he is the one he said, I choose those scholars. It's not me. And now we show you two scholars. Both of them of his choice. And both of them, they say it is a blood. And it is solid blood. And this is the reference in the front of you. Open it with Google browser. Muslims, how you feel? How you feel that this guy from all the Islamic books, he chosen books to prove that he is a liar. 